the high end shocks, for example, versus the normal shocks, if you decide you want to take your scion out on a dirt track, anyway, though. Anyway, one of the things I told the scion guys when we did this is it's going to be about a month before some smart aleck 12 year old goes into a real scion dealership with his parents to buy a scion, and he knows more about the car than anyone in the dealership. Are you ready for that? Okay. And they thought that's kind of cool. Well, they thought it was kind of cool until they started getting feedback from some of their sales guys saying, where are these 12 smart out 12 year olds coming from and know about, more about the car than I do? Um, you know, every few years, everybody in new technology stands up and says it's going to change everything, and mostly it doesn't. <laughs> this will. This will. No question about it. If you've got 12 year olds who know more about the product than the people selling the product, because the person selling the product has only spent one day in an in-service training, and the 12-year-old has spent the last three years with the product, that's going to change some things. One thing that's going to change, which is interesting, is the products have to get better. If you're building product based, so, so we've been approached a number of times by large food companies to do something in Wyville, okay? And we keep saying no. And we say no for the following reasons. One, it's not good for kids, and we don't do anything that's not good for kids. That's our, our ethics. But two, our kids would kill us. I mean, they would climb all over us if we actually opened up, for example, a franchise hamburger place in Wyville. Okay? They know it's not good stuff. They don't want it in their virtual world. So what happens? Now, that isn't to say there aren't a lot of people out there making virtual worlds that are full of stuff that isn't good for kids. But those people also have terrible engagement metrics. They might have lots of uniques because they can spend a lot of money on advertising and merge different uh, brands together into huge numbers of uniques, but their engagement metrics are not so great. And so as we shift from eyeballs to eyeballs connected to brains, you're also shifting a lot of other things. And as you educate consumers, you're making a lot of changes that are fundamental. And anybody that knows a 12-year-old knows that they're the best educated population of humans that have ever existed. And they're the most market savvy. The reason is because they have access to all this information, and that's the way brains work. The more information you have, the smarter you get. Well, that, that actually brings, you know, some of the things that, that you just mentioned kind of bring a question to me, and I, I'm putting it out to, to all of you gentlemen. You, you're discussing about children and protecting children. Well, you know, within that, my legal brain starts to, you know, bubble. And there are quite a, there are quite a lot of laws out there to protect children, like COPA and, and other things. To the extent the information that you guys are compiling on, you know, usership and eyeballs or, you know, within the virtual world, is any of that information what they might call personally identifiable, i.e., is it information that, is it generalized information, or is it really specific information to which you could potentially identify a person? Um, because I've heard different companies, um, uh, Massive being one of them, that you know, they're, one of their people told me lately, I could target an advertisement to your Xbox, targeted just to you, from the information that we have on you. And that, you know, freaked the hell out of me, excuse my language, but um, I, I kind of put it out to you guys. Are, are you doing anything along those lines, or is it really more just, you know, how many, how often people are there and the time that they're there for? Uh, we're like massive. We know what people have clicked on, what they have done, where they have gone, and what they have said. And because of that, we know a lot about them, and we can categorize as specifically tailored toward their likes and dislikes. One of the things that Massive has on to their advantage is the huge deep pockets and a long run time before they actually were charging with which to gather data. And so they also had deals with the hardware providers and so forth to basically get a huge volume of data with which to begin mapping categorizations uh, and segmenting, basically market segmenting. Uh, and so then they had that data on launch. We're having to compile ours and we have almost a million unique avatars in our database, of which we have activity on maybe 400,000 of them, and of which we have statistically uh, important 
uh, information on them that we could start to categorize to them on a fraction of that, close to like 20,000. So 20,000 out of a million is a very small number. And in this numbers game, again, you have to collect the data, they have to click on stuff, they have to move around, they have to do things before you can profile them. But do we? Yes. Do we actually release that to anybody else other than inside of our company? No. And just, just to be clear, and I, 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 I think I understand the difference, but you may have that information in the avatar, but you're not going to be able to say, this avatar is John you know, Joe Johnson. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, you do. So what is that? Is, it, is, it, is, that, is there a legal problem there? Could there well, be sure. I mean, you have, you know, as much if you're, if you're containing information on, which is personally identifiable, whether it be financial, whether it be health, or whether it be, you know, phone, social security, bir you know, birthday, any of that sort of thing. There is privacy laws in the U.S. that actually do cover those things, and to the extent you have a data breach, um, there's a whole set uh, system of laws that, to a certain extent, differ from state to state on those on how you have to respond to those sort of things. And when it happens, you have to respond immediately, meaning you have to be able to be in a position to identify the data that was breached and to put out to the individuals whose data may have been breached within a matter of days. Invest in really good security. Yep. Very important. Or actually what I tell a lot of clients, don't gather. Don't, yeah, don't gather. Have it, let a third party gather. You know, work do you need that information to run your business or can you have a third party that's controlling that information and let them worry about it? You know, if you need it for your business, gather it and put in the security protocols. If you don't, if you're just compiling it for an app, you know, a, a virtual um, asset sale or whatnot, well, let, let, let the processing company handle it and let them deal with it. Yeah, we do not. <coughs> so, I mean, we we don't individually identify and uh, never have. We can get massive amounts of data, you know, sort of the law of large numbers applies on the internet and virtual worlds. Uh, one reason that people want to get highly individualized data is if you're doing things like focus groups, for example. Focus groups make no sense anymore uh, because I can immediately get 100, 200,000 kids in a survey in Wyville uh, to give me whatever information I want without knowing who the individuals are. And that kind of data can be used as effectively as a focus group or even more effectively. So anyway, we don't, we don't collect it. It's also... Um, you know, it's sort of funny how things work. I mean... People generally, when, when new technology comes along, they figure they try to figure out how to use how to do the old things on the new technology. Okay, and it usually takes a while before they realize, huh? New medium. This is new technology. Maybe the old things don't apply. So, for example, why do 99% of all the websites in the world look like a book? It's ridiculous. An animated book. It's ridiculous. The printing press was invented 500 years ago. We know it doesn't work very well in education uh, or almost anywhere else. The print media is dying, so why are they making the internet look like books? Anyway, it's the same thing with marketing. So, you know, people want to drill down and, and change the sign when you walk by, sorry, because they happen to know that you have gerbils at home, so they want to put gerbil food up on the sign. It's just not, it doesn't, it doesn't have the feel of the web for me. Perhaps if the click through goes up. <laughs> well, we get 15, 20 percent click throughs on silver. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, this is an we're, we're doing this again in a couple of months. We did so it before. Yeah, this is an iteration. Yeah. Well, I, I always said, you know, hey, the, be the best panels you can possibly have are the ones where people basically know each other and also know enough to be able to disagree with each other. <laughs>